this episode of Travelogue, I discover what makes the Chongqing lifestyle so unassumingly special, and how it's evolving and modernizing along with the city. That's always shrouded in mysterious fog. But the city that lies under it is actually one of the most vibrant in the country. In fact, there's a saying about Chongqing. It's known for three main things: hot food, hot weather, and hot tempers. <laughs> And they're all intertwined together with the city's fascinating culture and lifestyle. I'm Megan. Welcome back to Chongqing. Chongqing lies deep in China's southwest. It gets hot and humid here, but the weather has produced a pretty tasty byproduct. When you hear Chongqing, the first thing that probably comes to mind is hot pot, and that's because hot pot is really a way of life here. It's deeply intertwined with the culture and the climate and the history, so much so that there is even a museum here that celebrates all things hot pot. What火锅 Before coming to Chongqing, I thought hot pot was just a meal.、Um, I had no idea that there were so many interesting stories that stem from the history of hot pot and so many different types of pots too. I mean, there are ones here made from bronze and silver and porcelain. They're they're really like works of art too. They're very intricate and have these beautiful carvings and paintings on them that it's kind of like walking through an art gallery. What is Chongqing hot pot? This is the key. 重庆火锅是麻辣火锅。麻辣火锅是重庆的发源地。Spicy bean paste stretching as far as the eye can see. This is one of the essential mouth-burning elements of Chongqing hot pot, guaranteed to make you slick with perspiration. And that's actually the whole point. According to Chinese medicine, living in a humid environment can cause excess internal moisture, and sweating it out is the only way to deal with it. This sizzling broth really is every bit as fiery as it looks. The chili oil and Sichuan peppers are no joke, and the flaming explosion of red-hot flavor, along with a loss of feeling in your taste buds that numbs you down to your very core, make for a one-of-a-kind gastronomic experience. If you can't handle spice, you've been warned: this definitely isn't for the faint of heart. Chongqing is famous for its spicy hot pot, and this is how much people love hot pot here. This mountain is covered with dozens of hot pot restaurants, and this one called Pi Pa Yuan is by far the largest, and it's it's huge. As huge as this city's hot pot obsession, there is a belief among the Chongqing locals that eating spicy food for generations has given them a collective toughness. As for the numbing quality of the spices, 
It's said that it helps to dull any pain or suffering, and that locals are more positive because of it. The impact of Hot Pot runs deep. One in 30 people here is in a line of work related to Hot Pot, and there's plenty of work to go around. After all, the possibilities for Hot Pot concoctions are endless. Almost anything you can imagine that's edible can be thrown into the pot and turned into a meal. Hot Pot is taken really seriously here in Chongqing. Uh, we're at a restaurant right now with an outdoor kitchen prep area, and they're getting all the ingredients ready for dinner. Um, these are the hard pallets of ducks, which I've never seen before. Um, it's, the, it's the spot on the roof of the mouth. And those are cow lips. Never had that before either. I'm definitely having a lot of food first here. Things I'd never have expected to enjoy have ended up being mouth-watering after simmering in a stew of oil and chilies. It's remarkable to think that Chongqing-style hot pot actually originated as a poor man's food. It was popular among dock workers who could only afford off-cuts of meat other people didn't want. They'd congregate along the banks of the Yangtze River at dinner time to boil up their meat. An open flame, a makeshift pot, generous helpings of spice, and dinner was served. Hot pot used to be just a way for people to fill their bellies, but it's been upgraded to a lifestyle. Uh, this restaurant is nestled in the mountains above Chongqing, overlooking the city, and people sit for hours in these fancy pagodas and enjoy hot pot with their friends and families. Although lavish dining palaces are replacing noisy roadside joints, the food still harkens back to the days of the dockside laborers. They often used metal frames to cordon off sections of the pot, so strangers could huddle together and cook their food in their own little patch of broth. A similar practice is employed today for people who can't handle their spice, usually out-of-towners. They get a personal section of broth that won't set their tongues on fire. That way, everyone can enjoy. When it comes to eating, most locals agree the more people gathered around the pot, the merrier. Yep, this sure is a far cry from the gritty origins of Hot Pot. There are more than 20,000 Hot Pot restaurants in Chongqing, so to differentiate themselves, a lot of restaurants choose a unique theme or atmosphere. And based on the romantic flower canopy I'm sitting under, I'm guessing the theme here is romance. It might seem like fancy silverware and splattering chili oil don't mix, but it's just another sign of the changing now. And uh, even the presentation of all the dishes is really intricate and ornate. Uh, like, check out the little Barbie. After several consecutive hot pot meals, I've realized something about spicy food. Once you've consistently singed your taste buds, you start building up tolerance to the burning. So, bring on the citron peppers. Even so, I'll probably have to subsist on milk and crackers for a while after this. Coming up next, I discover pockets of tranquility in Chongqing, hidden among the skyscrapers.
or shine, people here love to shop. And shopping is actually a primary tourist attraction. No amount of online retail has made a dent in the crowds filling the shopping districts here. The shopping culture here may not entirely be about making purchases. It's also about getting outdoors, where you get a different view to admire every few steps. This is the longest graffiti street in China. The art has reinvigorated this old quarter of Chongqing, ushering the area into the 21st century with a distinctly contemporary twist. It's an interesting juxtaposition, this whimsical artwork flourishing in the shadows of the city's multi-span bridges and gleaming skyscrapers. As it turns out, this city is full of opposites colliding. At first glance, it might seem like the pace of life here in Chongqing is lightning fast all the time, but people here also really know how to unwind and enjoy life. And that's why there are a lot of little pockets around the city, like this one, um, that are perfect for people who want to catch their breath or relax. And on one of the rare sunny days like today in Chongqing, uh, that's what everyone wants to do. In a city with so many geographic contours, carving out large areas for parks offering a quiet escape just isn't realistic. Here, you have to know where to look to find little alcoves of tranquility. The rhythm in this tiny neighborhood is notably slower and calmer than the hectic pace Chongqing is known for. Living in a metropolis can be stressful at times, and spots like this offer a retreat from the flurry of the city. I think if I lived in Chongqing, this would be my regular hideout. designated a municipality in 1997, it transformed itself from a nondescript city into an economic powerhouse at a jaw-dropping speed. With so much changing around them, the locals are understandably keen to hold on to pieces of the past. I never would have thought that one of Chongqing's old traditional tea houses would still be so popular. Every single table here is filled with people eating snacks and sipping tea and just having a nice afternoon. And also really keeping the spirit of the old Chongqing alive. The city outside may be changing and developing, with a new addition to the ever-changing skyline appearing in the blink of an eye. But here, time is at a standstill. Regulars play cards and wei qi, also known as go, over cups of tea, just like they've been doing for decades. I get the feeling that people leave their troubles at the door. 15 kwai for a cup of tea and you can spend the day eating sunflower seeds and chatting with friends. So I think what's really cool about these old traditional tea houses is that there are a lot of 
secret signals, um, different ways of placing the teacup lid that let the shop owner know different things. So, for example, if you've run out of hot water and you want some more, you can put the lid like that, and then someone will come to pour some water for you. Now, if you want to step away for a second, but you'll be back later, you put the lid on top and then place a lighter on top of the lid, and that lets people know you'll be back for your tea really soon. Now, these traditions have mostly uh, faded with time, but they're still followed very closely at this tea house. Of course, everything changes with time. The same faces have stuck around, but they've been joined by a younger crowd. In recent years, this tea house has become something of a trendy hotspot. Seeing grandparents and teenagers under one roof enjoying the same pastime gives this place a certain charm, don't you think? In Chongqing, though, it's just another sign of the shifting times, the new colliding with the old. Everything eventually gets swept up in the inevitable current of change. All you can do is hold tightly onto traditions while they last. There's an unmistakable air of carefree relaxation here, with patrons spending hours sitting on thin, rickety benches. I can't imagine them being comfortable, but to the regulars, these seats must be the homiest spot in the world. Coming up next, I get to experience Chongqing's famous nightlife firsthand from street snacks to open air dancing, and it doesn't disappoint. Hongya Cave is modeled after some of the older buildings in Chongqing. So it's built on stilts to accommodate the slope of the mountain. So when you enter Hongya Cave from street level, you're on the first floor. And then when you go all the way to the top and exit from the very top floor, there's another street up there. In Chongqing, the city and the mountains are one. Hongya Cave is built around the nooks and crannies in a steep cliff. Pretty impressive for an 11-story building. This type of architecture on stilts is unique to the Bayou ethnic group. If you've ever received a postcard from a friend visiting this city, it was probably a picture of Hongya Cave. But Hongya Cave doesn't reveal its true beauty until after sundown, when it transforms into a stunning nightscape. Does this place look oddly familiar? Well, it's said that a building in the film Spirited Away was modeled after this very spot. We're on the fourth floor of Hongya Cave, and there's so many street snacks and little shops. I don't really know where to start. There are a lot of food stands here, but pretty much every single one has some kind of spiciness to it, whether it's noodles or preserved meat, they're all spicy. So if you don't like spice, you may not enjoy the food in Chongqing very much. 
So this is uh, often sour and spicy um, noodles. And they're a, a local delicacy from here in Chongqing. The line is really long, must be really good. So this is probably one of the most popular, if not the most popular tourist destination in Chongqing. I mean, look how beautiful it is. The architecture is really, is really traditional. It resembles those older buildings in Chongqing. But at the same time, it's lit up with these gorgeous lanterns and lights. And I think that's why it really shines at night. All the lights turn on and it's so vibrant. Chongqing is absolutely stunning at night, with dazzling lights cutting through the city's perpetual fogginess. Perhaps this explains the great energy of the city's nightlife. No one wants to stay indoors when the atmosphere outdoors is so spirited. And things actually get livelier as the night wears on. And a favorite form of nightlife for many locals? Eating hot pot, of course, in the open air, on the sidewalk, the way it was originally meant to be enjoyed. The ingredients don't have far to travel before making their way into a hot pot. This market supplies lots of the restaurants in Chongqing and even ships ingredients to the U.S. and Canada. To guarantee the freshness, the market is only open from 8 at night to 4 in the morning and produce to be shipped internationally is on the plane before the sun comes up. A hearty dinner is by no means the end of the night in Chongqing. Some people go on to bars, some hit up karaoke, and others go dancing. But not in a club or ballroom. This is square dancing, Chongqing style. Getting your groove on alongside hundreds of strangers in a huge city square. It's a popular form of exercise, particularly among the elderly. It's free, easy on the joints, and anyone can participate, shimmying and boogieing the night away in the glow of the city lights. Come on, don't be shy about joining in. The kids are doing it too. Chongqing blends its rich history with its modern day magnificence in a way I don't think I've ever seen in another city. It blends the two, combines the two, so that there's always room for progress and advancement, even in the middle of history and tradition. Even if you have two left feet like I do, you can get a kick out of this low-cost form of group exercise. Gotta burn off the hot pot somehow. But my evening still isn't over. Chongqing's panorama of towering skyscrapers is so stunning at night that I have to appreciate it properly. That means getting on a ship and sailing down the Yangtze River. Wow, there are a lot of people. But look at that skyline. It's absolutely beautiful.
What a perfect way to end the day in Chongqing. High rises stretching skyward, bridges soaring overhead, and the water reflecting a perfect mirror image of the scenery. This city has come so far in such a short time that it boggles the mind. Old things are being lost, and new things are taking their place as the city continues to expand, rearrange, and stretch higher into the sky. Rapidly as the change is happening, I think that in their heart of hearts, Chongqing locals are still the resourceful, spirited folks huddled around a hot pot down by the docks. I'm Megan. Thanks for joining me in Chongqing, and see you next time on Travelogue.